um, crime, uh, which is on slide 74. This is made by, this is uh, introduced by Juliana Rizzo and Tai Duan. They three-peat this year for their, uh, for their, for their research here. Um, crime is a acronym for Compression Ratio Info Leak Made Easy. It's a targeted attack against HTTPS, for those SSL, and the speedy protocols when data compression is used. That's the trick. Data compression must be used. On slide 75 here, we'll give you the, uh, the basics of the scenario here. The crime attack will decrypt the HTTPS traffic, and its intended purpose is to steal cookies and hijack sessions. I'm sure you can do more, but this is what they did. The preconditions are that the attacker must be able to sniff your network traffic. They might share a uh, WLAN, they might be your ISP, your network admin, they might have hacked your router, imagine that. Um, the second thing that, the, that must happen is the victim must visit evil.com, whatever, it's something that the bad guy controls, because you need to be able to force the victim to send requests uh, if you're the attacker. Third, very important that the, both the browser and the server support TLS compression or the, uh, or the speedy protocols. Previously vulnerable browsers were Firefox and Chrome. They have been patched. They are okay now if you're running the latest versions. But a bunch of the mobile browsers are suspect right now, according to the research. On the server side, according to Ivan Ristic's research, 42% of the sites surveyed by his service support TLS compression. I think it's still true today. And some of the examples that are out there were Gmail, Twitter, Dropbox, and GitHub and that uh, Ty Duong and Giuliano showed that they could exploit with this attack. So what are the basics of this particular attack? Because it gets really complicated really, uh, really fast. The basics aren't so hard, but getting down in the weeds definitely does. Uh, let's hit slide 76. So this is a chosen plain text attack. Compression used in this context reduces the number of bytes contained in the data stream by removing redundant bits. When you do this, there's a side effect of the compression in that it leaks clues about the encrypted context and provides a side channel to those with the ability to monitor data. That leak is data length, and it's really difficult, if not impossible, to hide the length of the data. So what you can do is by modifying the clear text payload of hundreds or thousands of times and watching how each one interacts with the encrypted data that will munch together, and you can see examples of the requests, you can start inferring uh, data about the encrypted data. So an encrypted message is combined with an attacker-controlled JavaScript that, letter by letter, performs a brute force attack on this secret key. When the bad guys guess the first letter of, let's say, the session cookie, they then will fix that and begin to brute force the next ones, and so on and so forth, whatever they are. Once the first character is guessed, then they just leverage up from there. And there's very good research on this to show how it works. But I want to boil it down on the next slide, and then Giuliano's uh, uh, Giuliano Rizzo's words because he sets it best on how basic on how easy this is uh, to get it down. He says basically the attacker is running uh, script on evil.com. He forces the browser to open request to bank.com by, for example, adding image tags with sources pointing to bank.com and doing those you know uh, subtly, slowly changing, changing character by character the request that he's sending to bank.com. Each of those requests contains data from mixed sources. Um, you know, the path, the cookies, the you know, headers, and things like that. In the request, the attack data and the data produced by the browser is compressed and mixed together. Those requests can include the path, which the attacker controls, the browser headers, which are public, and the cookie, which should be secret. The problem here is, and again, his words, is that the compression combines all those sources together. The attacker can sniff the packet to get the, guess the size of the request by changing the path. The, the compression leaks the size, and then the brute forcing allows you to determine what's in the encrypted data. Uh, he could attempt to minimize the request size uh, when the file name matches the cookie. So again, that's the diagram, the way it works. The bad guy is just forcing your browser to make very slow brute force attempts at the, at the web server until he can you know, infer what your session cookie happens to be. Uh, we don't have time.